Go. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Redwoods. Sorry, we had a bit of technical difficulty uh, getting started, but here we are. And tonight, I'm really delighted to be able to present to you the music of six Rhode Island composers, uh, five of whom I have an association with, and the sixth whom I admire greatly. We're going to start with Edith Hemingway, who was born in 1926 in Brookline, Massachusetts. And Edith lives on the east side of Providence right now. And this past summer, my wife Diana had the opportunity to sing a couple of her songs, um, that is Edith's songs. I first met her during the 70s during Rhode Island College's Summer Chamber Music Festival. She grew up in Boston, received her master's degree in vocal accompaniment from the New England Conservatory. She studied English literature at McGill University and located in Providence in 1962, where she became the studio accompanist for David Laurent's voice students. It was at that time that she fell in love with the voice and the repertoire for the voice and the piano. There is an organization, a chamber music ensemble called the Hemingway Ensemble. They're based in the Netherlands. And through a connection when their clarinetist sang in uh, um, Savannah, Georgia, they met Edith and decided to record her music. And anything she comes up with today, that ensemble has recorded. The name of the CD from which I am taking tonight's selections is called To Paradise for Onions, the collected chamber works and art songs of Edith Hemingway. I'm going to play for you first a chamber music piece for clarinet, cello, and piano called Question of Travel. And this is a set of chamber music movements. The one that I'm going to play is called Think of the Long Trip Home. <laughs> And so on. I'm going to talk less than usual this evening and give you less background and hope that you can look up some of this material because I really want you to hear this music, which I suspect is unfamiliar to many of you. Um, the ensemble, the Hemingway Ensemble, is made up of Claren McFadden and Roberta Alexander, uh, sopranos, pianist Von Schlepp clarinetist Nancy Braithwaite and cellist Michael Sterling. The next uh, song I would like to play for you is from a set called The Children's Garden of Verses after the poetry of Robert Louis Stevenson. And the first piece is when, uh, called Windy Nights. Whenever the moon and stars are set, whenever the wind is high, all night long in the dark and wet, a man goes riding by. Late in the night when the fires are out, why does he gallop and gallop about, and so on. What I would like you to hear is the, especially the piano part, which I think sets the mood of a windy night perfectly. <laughs> Oh, 
It has been said uh, by critics that this music is discreet, intriguing, intelligent, and compelling. The next song we will hear is uh, to a text by Langston Hughes. It is simply called Hope. The text goes, sometimes when I'm lonely, don't know why. Keep thinking I won't be lonely by and by. And I think Edith matches the tenor of the poem and the style of Langston Hughes quite nicely. Edith has composed many, many art songs and chamber works for children's operas. Um, and this recording, as I mentioned, is to Paradise for Onions. The recording won third place in the America Prize in chamber music in 1918, or 2018, pardon me. The next composer I would like to feature this evening is Paul Nelson, who was born in 1929 in Phoenix, Arizona and lived in Providence for many years. He passed away in 2008. His compositions, he is uh, composed in all genres except opera, and they have been performed on four continents. He was born in Phoenix, attended public schools there. Uh, further music study was at Arizona State, the Colorado College, where he studied with Paul Hindemith, and he received a master's from Harvard University where he studied with Walter Piston and Randall Thompson. 
He was awarded a John Knowles Payne Fellowship in Music for a year at the University of Vienna, where he studied music and foreign languages. He was awarded the Rome Prize and was a fellow at the American Academy in Rome. He held teaching positions at the University of Louisville and where I met Paul was when he moved to Brown University in 1964, where he taught theory and composition until 1983. And as I mentioned, he stayed in Providence until his death in 2008. The music that he has written, as I said, covers many genres, but the ones to which I am most, or with which I am most familiar are his larger works for chorus, orchestra, and soloists. His Songs of Life, which he uh, com composed in 1982, I was privileged to conduct the world premiere at the, the uh, state or at the World Fair in Knoxville, Tennessee, in uh, the summer of 1982. In 1990, the Royal Island Civic Chorale and Orchestra commissioned a work from him called Cantata Salmorum for soprano, chorus, and orchestra, which we did the premiere uh, in that year. And he modeled this performance or this composition rather after. Stravinsky's famous Symphony of Psalms. The second performance we did of the piece was in 2000, the anniversary of Paul's 70th birthday. And that was at the Cathedral of Saints Peter and Paul. And I'm wondering as I look at uh, our class this evening, whether Karen Jackson Geary was a member of that orchestra. Uh, it's a moving and eloquent score according to Channing Gray in the Providence Journal. That performance, the cantata was paired with two other works by Nathan and Sebastian Courier. We're going to hear part of Sebastian Courier's work later, but all three of these composers are Rhode Islanders and were winners of the Rome Prize. The uh, performing ensemble here is the Rhode Island Civic Chorale and Orchestra, the soprano soloist, is Diana McVeigh. The conductor is yours truly. By the way, the Cathedral of Saints Peter and Paul has a four second reverb time. So it's not your apparatus, it's the echo. I forgot to read you the text, Cantate Domino, or Canticum, Cantata Salmorum, of course, is Songs of Psalms. And it's like, as I mentioned, Symphony of Psalms by Stravinsky. The first text you hear is from Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth, sing to the Lord, praise his name, 
proclaim his salvation day after day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. The second movement, uh, Laudate Dominum, is praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, uh, the famous Psalm 150. I'm going to move ahead a bit. play more, but time presses on. Um, Paul wrote many, many choral works. Uh, his favorite composer was J.S. Bach, and he tried to pattern his counterpoint after Bach's for the simple reason that it was kind to the voice, unlike some other composers that we've all experienced, I'm sure. The next composer I'd like to feature this evening is Nico Muley was born in 1981. He was born in Vermont, but raised in Providence. He sang as a child in the choir at Grace Church in downtown Providence, Grace Episcopal Church, where he developed an interest in choral music, especially English choral music. He began piano lessons at the age of 10, and his music study and education continued at the Wheeler School in uh, Providence. He received a BA in English from Columbia. 
University of New York and an MM from Juilliard. And he studied where he studied with John Corigliano and Christopher Rouse. He also served as um, an assistant to Philip Glass as an archivist, editor, keyboard player, and conductor. Nico is not unlike a lot of other composers these days, is that he reaches out and stretches himself and composes in many, many different uh, genres. Classical music, uh, movie scoring, uh, con um, choral works, rock and roll, he covers the gamut. I'm going to play, uh, well, he's had two operas that were commissioned jointly by the Metropolitan Opera and the English National Opera. The first, which we will listen to part of, is called Two Boys. It's about an internet experience. The second, which he composed in 2017, uh, was Marnie, after the book, not after the movie. And it was debuted in 2017 in, um, the, at the English National Opera in 2018 at the Metropolitan Opera here in the U.S. based on a 1961 novel by Winston Graham. In 2020, he completed a virtual premiere for the San Francisco Symphony during the COVID pandemic, and he is one of eight members of a committee appointed by Esa Pekka Salonen, the new music director in San Francisco to help with decisions regarding that great orchestra. Here is a rather Philip Glass-like uh, composition. It's called A Hudson Cycle. The next item is from his opera, Two Boys. Uh, it's a chorus, you there, who is this? And it's quite John Adams-like, I think, or Philip Glass-like. It's Nico's own. And this is toward the beginning of the opera. And I, I think you'll enjoy it. I was going to read the text, but I can't find it. I'm sorry. I'll read it w when I find it. Here it is, Act One, Scene Four, Chorus, You There. <laughs> it. You there, I thought I lost you. You still here? That's the text. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
personally think it's reminiscent of two of the three trilogy operas by Philip Glass, Glass Satyagraha and Akhenaten, especially Akhenaten. I, I think it resembles that a great deal. Um, I discovered when I was putting this talk together, a piece of Nikos that I had no idea existed. The, the reason being it was written in 2022. It's called The Street, and it's for male chorus and harp. And it was commissioned by the um, King's College Choir and, har and the harpist. And it's recorded in King's College. And there is a uh, spoken text, which was written by Alice Goodman, who was the librettist for both Nixon and China, Dr. Atomic, and a couple other of uh, John Adams operas. This is Jesus, it's based on the stations and the street is the street in which Jesus walks with the cross. Here is Jesus uh, falls for the first time. My strength is made perfect in weakness. It's one thing to say it, another to witness. The sheer weight of the cross was unexpected, as was the mass of human depravity, ignorance, cruelty, apathy, the sediment built up since before the flood. A man fell among thieves who stripped him and left him bleeding. He never said a mumbling word. These are the street sounds of Jerusalem, layers of them, all the various accents and dialects of those come up for the Passover. Throat clearing, street vendors, laughter, excuses, curses. The sound of a slap and a child's wail. The cattle are lowing and the sheep and goats bleat together in one herd. Hobnailed sandals scrape the stone. The man fallen makes almost no sound. <laughs> Bless all the 
That recording is on the King's College label. It's The Street by Nico Muley, libretto by Alice Goodman. Uh, I think it's a fantastic piece. I recommend it, it to you. Notice that the use of the harp is somewhat reminiscent of Benjamin Britten's A Ceremony of Carols, in which the harp plays, of course, a major part. As I mentioned, Nico Muley is also a composer with many sides. And I'd like to play you part of his uh, soundtrack to Howard's End. This is called Seaside. <laughs> Perfectly lovely, I think. Our next composer is Rich Richard Cumming, known to his friends and family as Didi, which means firstborn in Chinese. Richard was born in Shanghai. He was raised in the Philippines and settled in San Francisco during World War II. He was born in 1928 and passed away in 2009, here in, in Texas, actually. He uh, studied with Arnold Schoenberg and Roger Sessions, and he says it's very hard to find their influences in his music, to which we all would agree. He also studied then in San Francisco with Ernest Bloch, the Swiss American composer we talked about a couple times ago, a couple sessions ago. The um, influence is much more visible or hearable and to his dying day, Dee Dee always referred to Ernest Bloch as Mr. Bloch. Richard's style is a continuation of the Franco-American tradition, and I think um, he's in that lineage which belongs to Virgil Thompson, Aaron Copeland, Ned Rahm, and Samuel Barber, especially the latter two when it comes to songwriting. I think Richard is one of the best songwriters that in classical music that we've that we've ever produced. And along with Ned Rohrm and Samuel Barber, I think he can be mentioned in that breath. As with many of his time, he gravitated toward the theater and he was composer in residence at Trinity Repertory Theater for 25 years. And he was the co-founder with Adrian Hall of that estimable repertory company. He's won many awards. 
but he has composed incidental music for over 50 plays in such theaters as Phoenix Theater in New York, the Milwaukee Repertory Theater, Esso Repertory, Trinity, of course, California's Marin Shakespeare Festival, Princeton's McCarter Theater, and so on. His music, including over 150 songs, is characterized, as has been said, by a pleasing lyricism, harmonies, and rhythms that owe much to jazz and popular music. His longtime friend and colleague, Ned Roram, whom I mentioned, said of him, though Richard Cumming is like many others, no one is quite like him, and that is all that counts. It has been said that he combines the best of Beethoven and Cole Porter. Here is a song by Richard Cumming, uh, as due in April. It's with Beth Orson Oboe and Carol Bogard is the soprano. I sing of a maiden that is matchless, king of all kings to her son she shows. He came all so still, there his mother was, as dew in April that falleth on the grass. Also used by Benjamin Britten in a ceremony of carols. I would like to play for you uh, a song that I think shows Richard the raconteur. Uh, he was one of the most brilliant people that Diane and I have ever met. And many an evening was shared over dinner. And he was also had, had a sense of humor that you would not believe. And I think it shows in his text that he chose for this piece called Love Song. The poem is by Philip Minor. I hope and pray that once you'll yawn or scratch your elbow or rearrange your smile, and then I'll see you as you really are. I often think I've slipped away and like a rampant kite, my heart darts jokant into the skies. But oh, you take great care to clutch the string and yank me back to your contempt. 
damn you and love and all these candied chains. One day they'll rot and you, my sweet, can go to hell or heaven or the brink of time for all I care. You'll not hook me again. Sing whoopee. Richard. <clears throat> he was. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that. Richard was commissioned by his good friend John Browning to write several works for him, among them 24 Preludes for Piano, and then this piece called Silhouettes, of which there are many movements. And I would like to play you a couple of those movements. The second movement is slow and lazy, and in parentheses, 3 a.m. blues. And the third movement is vivace. <laughs> Vivace. Richard, we miss you. The next composer I'd like to bring before you is Sebastian Courier. He's been heralded as, or his music has music with a distinct voice by the New York Times and as lyrical, colorful, firmly rooted into tradition, but absolutely new by the Washington Post. 
His music has been presented at major venues worldwide by acclaimed artists and orchestras. Sebastian was born in Huntington, Pennsylvania, and he was raised in Providence, according to his bio. But I know better, he was raised at 9 2nd Street in North Providence, where his father could walk to Rhode Island College, where he was on the music faculty. And his mother could walk to Providence College, where she was a teacher of composition and uh, theory. Sebastian also has a younger brother, Nathan, who is also a composer. It's a, it was an extraordinary family, and I spent a lot of time when, the young, when Sebastian and Nathan were growing up at their home. And I had the privilege of conducting three world premieres by Marilyn, their mother, and two each by the kids before they reached 20. They both went on, and Sebastian got uh, degrees at Columbia and then at Juilliard and joined the Columbia University faculty. He's won the Grawmeyer Award, which is a big award for composers, the Berlin Prize, the Rome Prize, the Guggenheim Fellowship, National Endowment for the Arts Fellowship, Academy Award from the American Academy of Arts and Letters, and the Distinguished Alumni Award from the Manhattan School of Music. His residencies have been at the Institute for Advanced Studies in Princeton University and the McDowell and the Yaddo colonies McDowell in New Hampshire and Yaddo in Saratoga Springs, New York. <clears throat> when I visited the McDowell colony several years ago in the room in which the composer wh whom we had commissioned was staying, carved in the wall were three names that leapt out to me. The first was Leonard Bernstein, the second was Marilyn Courier, and the third was Sebastian Courier. All had stayed in that um, cottage. It's a, it's a unique place. It's a wonderful place. <clears throat> I'm going to play a bit of what he called microsynth, M-I-C-R-O-S-Y-M-P-H, all lowercase levels. He was commissioned by the American Composers Orchestra under the direction of Dennis Russell Davies to compose a 10-minute piece. So what Sebastian tried to do was compose a Mahler symphony in five movements that took only 10 minutes. He missed it by one minute. Uh, it takes about 11 to perform. The first movement is called Quick Change, and it's very compressed time, very fast. <laughs> play a little bit of the adagio for you. 
is scored for strings, brass, and ringing pitch instrument uh, percussion, as well as harp. It's very beautiful, very contemplative. It goes on, the other movement, that was Adagio. The other movements are Nano Scherzo. A kaleidoscope is the last movement. And we have a minute waltz in which quarter note equals 60 and there are 60 quarter notes in three quarter time in the piece. That recording again was from uh, 1990 at the Cathedral of St. Peter and Paul. Here's a work also by Sebastian Courier commissioned by the great violinist Anna-Sophie Mutter. It's a performance with, in the world premiere performance uh, with the New York Philharmonic, Alan Gilbert conducting. This is called Time Machines and the first thing we will hear is compressed time. <laughs> And Sophie Mutter. And finally, one more composer this evening. Uh, I'm going to run a little late, I know, but we got a, a very late start. His name is Peter Boyer, and I think, Karen, you played a piece of his as well. <clears throat> he was born February 10th, 1970, and he went to school at Smithfield High School, Rhode Island College, then the Hart School of Music in the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, where he received his doctorate in film scoring. He studied also with John Corigliano in New York City. In 1996, he was appointed to the faculty of the Claremont Graduate School, part of the Claremont Schools in Claremont, California. He's had his works performed by the Boston Pops, the National Symphony, Hollywood Bowl, Philadelphia, and Bamberg Symphony. His recordings generally have been, take, have been recorded in the Abbey Road Recording Studio, remember the Beatles were there, uh, with the London Symphony Orchestra. Probably the most well-known piece of his, even though he's had 200 performances by 100, 100 orchestras since beginning this, is Ellis Island, The Dream of America. It won a 19 or 2003 Grammy Award nomination. And in 2017, it was featured on a PBS Great Performances a uh, program by the Pacific Symphony, Carl St. Clair, conducting. Uh, in 2010, he wrote The Dream Lives On, a portrait of the Kennedy brothers, which was premiered by the Boston Pops uh, with narrators uh, Morgan Freeman and Robert De Niro. I'm going to play a bit of Ellis Island for you. The first is an interlude just for orchestra.
etc. <clears throat> the Dream of America, Ellis Island, is a collection that Peter put together of words of immigrants spoken in letters uh, when they came to America. The first is words of Lazarus Solomon, who emigrated to America from Hungary in 1920. The speaker is Eli Wallet. I will only play partial movements. I did not have a normal childhood because it was a war, a never ending war. That's all I knew of the scarcity of food, the scarcity of materials. He had to fight for a piece of land, hide it, because it was taken away from you. So when I left, I just came with the shirt on my back. The Romanians came into Hungary as an army of occupation. When they came in, they were anxious to get rid of the minorities. The Jews had nobody who would stick up for them. The Romanians made Jews turn in their precious stones, silver coins, of which my father had a big amount. And not only did they take it away from him, but they beat him mercilessly. And the soldier who beat him up didn't have the heart to hit him hard. And the officer hollered, hit him hard! <laughs> And before they took him away, he came over to us children. Let me bless you. We never knew if he was going to come back because over there, they took you away and you disappeared. So when he came over to bless us, my mother collapsed and died. The next is uh, the words of Helen Rosenthal, who emigrated from Belgium in 1940. The speaker is Bibi Neuwirth. I lived in Belgium with my sister for two and a half years. That's where I met my husband, Paul. We got engaged in 1936 and were married soon after. By 1940, the war was coming closer to Belgium, and I had a feeling that the Germans would have to go through Belgium to get to France. I kept on saying to Paul, we have to leave. From Belgium, we went to Lisbon and we stayed there about three months. We couldn't get a boat, we couldn't get a plane. Everybody was trying and everybody wanted to go. Finally, we got a berth on the Nyasa. It was a small boat, it must have been a happy boat. They just put paint over it and that was it. One meal I ate on that boat the first night. And after that, it was very hard. We traveled for 12 days. I couldn't eat. It was a nervous time. One day they said there were mines, water mines. Another day, a German boat passed by. We wondered whether we would ever get to America. I was thinking, survive the day. That's it. Nothing else mattered to survive the day and survive the voyage, nothing else. I didn't cry for what I lost, I didn't cry for what I haven't got, and I didn't care. To wash my face, to wash my hands, to keep the child going, and to be well, that's all. We got to New York, we were so elated, we were so happy. The elation came from the heart. You could see it on the faces. That's all you could see, the faces of the people. They were in awe. It's like we were safe. That's all there was. When we landed at Ellis Island, they said, what do you want? You want something to eat? I said, I want a good glass of milk. That's all. I Before I play the last piece, I just 
<clears throat> this is a small sampling of the wealth of talent that we have here in the state of Rhode Island musically in all walks of music. And it has been a real privilege to work with these composers through the last 50 years and uh, even more so to share their talents with you. The last piece is also by Peter Boyer. It's called Three Olympians, Apollo, Aphrodite, and Eris. Apollo, the god of everything. And I'm going to play a bit of that. If you want to hear the whole thing, come to a chamber orchestra of Rhode Island concert in April, and we'll play it for you. Thank you for attending and hope to see you next time. Thank you. Be safe. Be well. See you next time.